Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Um, it's my pleasure to present this talk today, and it seems like it was just yesterday that we met uh, in Singapore, but it's been a year, and I'm very excited to share the new information about new technologies that got available for us for comprehensive evaluation of the pregnancy over the last year. And uh, probably you remember if you were in Singapore, that was my last slide in the presentation last year, that uh, the most exciting thing about Canon technology is the fact that they continue to evolve and that um, the new applications um, are emerging. So, and these advances include this year, the advances in 2D imaging, in color imaging, and tissue structure quantification. Of course, this is unique techniques for Canon machines. And today we will take a look how we can apply these new tools and new advances in ultrasound imaging for comprehensive evaluation of the placenta, for dilated, for detailed first trimester anatomy ultrasound, for neurosonography, and I'm sure that Dr. Gibbos is going to um, talk a lot on this topic as well, and also for detailed cardiac function evaluation, which is really hot topic in the OB imaging nowadays. And all these advances became possible with an introduction of the new convex matrix probe, which allows you to achieve the very high frequency up to 10 megahertz. And this is I10CX1, which I'm very proudly introducing here. And it's available on the I-series machines, 700, 800, and the new uh, 900 that we had the pleasure to receive in our department about three weeks ago and already excited with the results that I'm going to show you and share with you in the next 20 minutes. So, and first of all, of course, there is a lot of interest to the first trimester imaging nowadays, and you probably know that the American Society of Ultrasound uh, in the medicine is just about to publish the new guideline that will make us to look at the first trimester anatomy in all details, and I think that this is the very helpful and very um, good timing that Canon came up with that probe that allows us to see the anatomy of the fetus, and this fetus in the first trimester, 12 weeks and six days, and you can see the resolution of the structures for, in this slide, we can see structures of the brain in the axial sweep and in the mid-sagittal sweep, and you can see that the structures that we can see here, they look so crisp and um, very defined that uh, the image uh, looks like it's done in the second trimester. So also we can, and this is very famous and very um, distinguished, very interesting feature on all um, Canon machines that it allows us to distinguish different tissues uh, in the abdominal cavity where the echoes sometimes are so close, like the genicity of the kidneys, liver, and bowels, sometimes so close that you know other machines not always allow us to differentiate between this. It's just you know the same shades of gray, but you can see here how nicely we can define the lung tissue, the diaphragm, the liver, and bowel, and also kidneys. So, and this is as early as 12 weeks and six days. So that um, introduction of these technologies allows us to improve our imaging in the first trimester, not just in the normal conditions, but in abnormalities as well. So, and of course, cardiac imaging in the first trimester, this is very important area that uh, develops very rapidly, and we published several papers on that. And you can see here that the 12 weeks gestation, this is a representation of the four chamber view, cross section of the chest. You can see that we can identify all four chambers, we can identify the position of the descending thoracic aorta, we can identify all that landmarks that we can see in the second trimester, the, the the resolution and clarity um, that uh, was not possible before. And of course, um, advances in the color imaging, so in the color Doppler, in the advanced dynamic flow, in the slow, uh, in the uh, um, SMI, so it allows us to visualize the flow not just in the heart but in the pulmonary veins and you can see here at 12 weeks that we can see the image exactly the same like in the second trimester. 
So now let's move on to the exciting advances in the uh, color Doppler imaging. And here you can see that the Doppler luminance imaging came around last year, and that allows us to visualize the intracardiac flow a little bit differently. So this technique allows to um, have the feeling of the chamber smooth and gives that 3D effect that is very eye friendly. And so here we have two examples of the normal heart and the heart of the left ventricular aneurysm where we can get a little bit later. So and you can see that the feeling of those chambers um, can be visualized very nicely. So also, uh, Canon technologies are very famous for the sensitive uh, applications for detection of the very slow and low velocity blood flows. And here you can see an example of the fetus, this very severe cytomegalovirus infection, there's a very enlarged spleen, and you can see pretty much every single small vessel within that spleen that can be evaluated using the SMI technology in combination with the luminous flow. And here is a very rare um, anomaly that Dr. Carvalho talked a little bit uh, about this yesterday. This is gigantic, like massive portosystemic shunt, and we have the direct communication between the superior and inferior portal, left portal veins and the left hepatic vein, and the size of the hepatic vein is compatible to the size of the heart. So, and um, this is very easy uh, to make the diagnosis of such a complex venous malformations if we use Canon technologies which are available for us today. So, and of course, um, evaluation of the baby and fetus is not possible without a comprehensive evaluation of the brain, and I think that um, Canon techniques are leaders in the neurosonography. And in our um, department, we are using this machine specifically for evaluation of the brain. And you can see here that transabdominally, the, the resolution is uh, phenomenal. And here are two examples of the very complex uh, brain abnormalities. This fetus has the complex um, genetic syndrome involving chromosome 17. And you can see the abnormal cortical development the thickness of the periventricular area is um, very enlarged. And here is another very complex malformation consistent with the posterior fossa abnormality, such as the megacisterna magna. We have absent cavum septum pellucidum. But what usually we can see only on the MRI imaging, this is small periventricular cyst that we can see here, conatal cyst. So in the past, we were not able to see. So, But there's an introduction of this new matrix process probes, it's possible, and the resolution sometimes even better than on the fetal MRI based on our experience. So here we can see the, genus, uh, the evalu evaluation of the corpus callosum, and um, we can see very clearly all the parts of the corpus callosum, and in particular the blood flow in the mid-sagittal view of the brain, allowing us to confirm that not just the anatomy, but the blood flow is correct. And here is an example that we had a few weeks ago, then the, feta, then the patient presented in about 32 weeks gestation, and clearly this is very thin, very short corpus callosum. You probably don't really need to measure that because for 32 weeks this is way too short. And if we apply our color Doppler techniques, you can see that the pericolosal artery is hypoplastic. It doesn't extend all the way to the back. So that the diagnosis of the malformations of the corpus callosum, such as the hypoplasia, shortening or a partial agenesis is very easy to the techniques that we have nowadays. And of course, this talk cannot be possible without mentioning our NIH grant that we are doing the support from the National Institute of Health, as you can see here, the Human Placenta Project. We are in the final stage of the project. We already recruited 600 patients for that, and we are very excited that now we have a massive amount of data that we are going to analyze in the next few years. And um, so we are very proud that we were were able to become a part of this project and without collaboration with Canon, we would never be able to do that. And I will show you why we chose the equipment from Canon to look at the placenta and collaborate with us on this research because um, we have technologies unique for the uh, mm, 
company that allows us to evaluate the biometry of the placenta, tissue structure of the placenta, calcifications, and the vasculature. And of course, the vasculature is um, improved, like uh, assessment of the vasculature got improved with an introduction of the SMI, or superb microvascular imaging, which allows uh, to evaluate the, the very precisely the very small vessels um, and reduce the number of artifacts that you can get. And here you can see the image of the placenta in about 12 weeks gestation, and you can visualize the flow from the fetal surface of the placenta and from the maternal surface of the placenta. But here, this is an example how the intraplacental vessels can be seen in about second, third trimester of the pregnancy, and we have different maps for that. And um, the introduction of the SMI, that was the revolution in the visualization of the vasculature of the placenta that can be done. And I believe that a lot of research is going to come up looking at the vasculature in normal and abnormal conditions. But the very important part that we can do not just the visualization of the vessels, that we can also do the quantitative analysis. And here is an example of the placenta in about 22 weeks gestation. And we can see the spiral arteries on top and the fetal arterioles on the bottom. And here is the typical blood flow that in the normal pregnancy should be detected in the placenta. So another parameter that allows to visualize the placenta vasculature available on the linear probe, this is the vascular index that can um, estimate how many uh, vasculature structures are present in the unit of the placenta. And again, this is very interesting tool for um, mm, quantitative assessment of the vascularization. And of course, the imaging never complete without use of the 3D imaging. And here you can see the 3D reconstruction of the placental vasculature. So pretty unique technique, again, that is available just on the um, linear probe. You can see that the machine can highlight for you the true calcifications within the placenta. So we know very well that in the breast imaging, presence of the microcalcification may have a lot of clinical significance. That's why we adopted that technique for the placental evaluation. And you can see that this is two placentas in the similar gestational age, and here we don't have any evidence of the calcifications. And this fetus, unfortunately, developed a very severe growth restriction, was delivered in about 32 weeks gestation. And the presence of the early calcifications could be a marker that we um, saw uh, that may possibly um, you know, point towards the not re very um, successful pregnancy outcome. So for placenta, uh, or structure quantification analysis, we have three very um, unique technologies, such as the shear wave elastography, intensity analysis, and attenuation analysis. And the shear wave elastography, that is technique that uh, involves the use of the short acoustic pulse that uh, sent through the tissue, in this case, through the placenta, that result in some displacement of the tissue that then can be evaluated and um, presented in terms of the velocity or the pressure, such as in the kilopascals. And here is a typical image uh, in assessment of the placental density or elasticity using the shear wave elastography. And you can see this is anterior placenta. And uh, we can measure. So this is very important that this is quantitative analysis of the structure of the placenta. So another uh, unique technique that is, uh, can be retrieved from the shear wave elastography data, this is the information on the dispersion, which is a little bit different parameter that also can help us to characterize, this, mm, characterize the properties of the placenta in normal and abnormal conditions. So and we are moving on to the intensity analysis. This is technique that allows us to assess the tissue homogeneity. And this also can play a role in evaluation of the placenta. And that can be the values can be presented as a, a normalized local variance, so that the images that you obtain and the uh, data that you are getting is actually normalized by the data obtained from the ideal tissue, and uh, if your um, 
um, measurements that you're obtaining is about one. That means that the structure is very homogeneous. And if uh, it's uh, higher than that, so that means that this is less homogeneous. And here is an example how this technique can be applied to the human placenta. Here we have the trace of the anterior placenta central segment. And this is 1.2, the measurement. And this is what we should observe in the normal placental tissue in the mid-second trimester. So that technique works equally well, uh, in independent from the placental location. It could be applied for the anterior placenta, as you can see here. It could be applied for the posterior placenta. You can see the, uh, that we can use just the areas of interest, the same way how we do for the shear wave elastography, or we can trace the entire segment that we're interested in. And also, it's, very, it's prelim data, and it will be published um, and presented in uh, Dallas in February at the SMFM Congress. So all the um, prelim results and the normal group will be presented there. And I want to invite you to participate uh, in the Congress and you know, uh, get to know a little bit more about this. So you can see that here in the second trimester, the placenta looks homogeneous. And then at the end of the pregnancy, it looks very heterogeneous. And what's really important that we can put a number on that so that we can uh, evaluate this and not just eyeball that, but get the measurement that objectively allows us to um, describe that findings. And finally, this is a technique that allows us to uh, look at the interaction between the ultrasound beam and the placental tissue and evaluate the attenuation. And as you know from the physics of ultrasound, the attenuation of the ultrasound signal uh, has a correlation to the properties of the tissue and based on that we can actually characterize the structure of different organs that was applied to the liver and so here is an example how that can be applied for the normal placenta and you can see here that for the liver and for the placenta for normal placenta the measurements are pretty much the same and this is the <coughs> presented as the attenuation coefficient and 0 0.5, 0 0.45 is considered normal. So now we will talk a little bit about different abnormalities of the placenta and how our new technologies can help us to make the differential diagnosis. So here is obviously the mass in the placenta consistent with angioma, and the combination of the 2D and SMI imaging can allow us to um, have an idea how vasculature that structure is. So we have different maps uh, on SMI, and here is a very good example that simultaneously we can evaluate the vasculature within the normal tissue of the placenta and within the mass using different colors and different maps. And what's also interesting, using the shear wave elastography, we can uh, quantitatively show the difference in the uh, structure of the tissue that we can just see in the 2D, but this is the way how we can objectively proof that this is a different tissue with different properties. And you can see that the um, measurements on the shear wave within the horian angioma is much higher than in the normal tissue of the same placenta. So the same uh, we can do using the intensity analysis. And here you can see the values. They are statistically different. That the area that represents chorioangioma shows a more heterogeneity because it has vessels and the soft tissue. And so this is definitely statistically different from the normal tissue that surrounds it. And finally, the same image of chorioangioma using the attenuation analysis. And again, here, which is expected. So attenuation will be higher in the structure, which is less homogeneous. And you can see almost a two-fold difference between the normal part of the placenta and the placenta where we can see chorioangioma. So here we can see two examples of the placenta, and both of them look not that great on 2D. I mean, I think that you agree that you see this one or that one, you're probably going to worry. And I would like to ask you which one you want to be, the one on the left or the one on the right? <coughs> oh, 
Okay, yeah, exactly. You don't want to be in any of this. So, but if we apply shear wave elastography, we can see very clearly that on this image, all our measurements actually were not successful. And you may ask me, probably you don't know what you're doing, but indeed that was a very horrible case because that patient had a massive abruption of the placenta. And um, so that was the patient who was a part of our placenta study. She was rushed to the hospital and in 10 minutes the C-section was performed. It was done at 28 weeks gestation. And indeed this study saved this baby's life because the outcome was um, favorable. And here, yes, the placenta may look pretty ugly, but you know, using our new tools, we can confirm that indeed the properties of the tissue are still okay. So that's why they, this is the objective tool to actually judge um, the function of the placenta. And then the last part of my talk, we are going to t uh, talk about my passion, that uh, my interests uh, since the residency in pediatric cardiology. This is the myocardial mo motion and deformation. And here you can see that the myocardial motion and deformation can occur in three dimensions in the longitudinal plane and radial plane and circumferential. So, and here we have a new techniques that allows us to evaluate um, very objectively a cardiac function. So, in the one technique, which is relatively new, this is the tissue Doppler imaging, and now ultrasound machine has a different um, options for the tissue Doppler imaging. So, what is that technique? It's the quantitative analysis of the information that we receive from the movement of the myocardium. So, basically, we are assessing the myocardial velocities, and also that the special post-processing algorithms, algorithms, it's possible to extract other parameters uh, from the spatial and temporal processing of this data, such as the displacement, strain, and strain rate. And um, this technique, as the regular conventional Doppler, exists in the settings of the pulse wave and the color-coded tissue Doppler imaging. So, and here is an example of the um, regular spectral um, pulse waves, tissue Doppler imaging, where we um, can apply the sample volume to the lateral wall of the mitral or tricuspid valve and uh, adjusting the presets of the Doppler, we can see uh, now not just the blood, no, not the blood flow across the um, similar navals, but actually movement of the annulus of the tricuspid and the mitral valve. So we can freeze this uh, spectrum, and what we ca what information can be obtained here? We can see the peak velocities during the systole, during early diastole, and during atrial contraction. And here is the cardiac cycle time intervals are highlighted that can be measured and evaluated. And you know that the um, global myocardial performance index or TI index can be calculated using this curve. So this is just the example of the abnormal heart that was a parvovirus uh, myocarditis, and you can see also the significant uh, pericardial and pleural effusion that create the, uh, pretty much the situation of the um, a restrictive cardiomyopathy, and you can just observe that the curves showing the um, tissue Doppler imaging of the tricuspid and mitral valve are um, significantly different from the normal. So how about the limitations? So unfortunately, the pulse wave and tissue Doppler has a one very serious limitation that you can assess one uh, sample or one region in a time. And this um, obstacle can be overcome using the color tissue Doppler imaging, uh, which is um, completely the software that is applied to the mm, a quiet video clip, and then uh, offline you can apply the area of interest at the same position, in this case at the annulus of the um, tricuspid valve, and the curve similar to the one that we got in the spectro Doppler can be obtained, and here we can see the early diastolic feeling, which is the E wave, the late diastolic feeling, systolic motion, and also can calculate the ratio. But then the main advantage is that simultaneously this in the same cycle, we can compare the right and the left side of the heart or the different segments within the same uh, myocardial wall, which is an advantage for, to the 
regular spectral tissue Doppler because um, here we are um, comparing the time events, the velocities this <coughs> during the same period of time for different structures, which is more objective. So, but um, the limitation for the tissue Doppler technique, uh, it's the angle dependent technique, velocity and deformation data, this is the one dimensional and require manual tracing of the region. So what can we do to improve that so that we can incorporate the speckle tracking algorithm that was successfully um, achieved and uh, now available on the machine, which is virtually angle independent quantification analysis of the myocardial motion and deformation. So it's based on the tracking of specific pixels within your image. And um, this way you can actually see uh, how every single part of the image had displaced during the cardiac cycle. And this is the principle. So they are looking at the uh, footprint or the fingerprint of the um, different um, points within this box. And we are tracking them through the cardiac cycle. So if you know the distance that each point going through, so then we can calculate the velocity and time. So in here we can see that using this technique, first of all, we can calculate the myocardial displacement. And this is the software that allows the tracking of the myocardium, in this case of the left ventricle. And we can track the endocardial, myocardial, and epicardial uh, points within the image to see how how they are displaced during the pregnancy. And again, this is the quantitative um, data, and we can also see even the injection fraction here. So we can take a look at the longitudinal velocities. Also, we can take a look at the strain and strain rate. And just a reminder that the strain is the mechanical characteristics that describe the relevant change in length between two states. So strain value is dimensionless and can be presented as a fractional, fractional number or percentage. So here is an example of the longitudinal um, strain. So, and uh, you can see that because heart is contracting, so that's why the strain is always negative. And here we can see the strain of each individual segment together with this white line where we have the um, average global strain. Also very important feature that the, and again, unique and very convenient for uh, Canon technologies that uh, system automatically from 2D video clip retrieves one uh, cardiac cycle and actually there are multiple of them, but it uh, identifies the best cardiac cycle and then it tracks um, movement of the muscle of the heart during that cardiac cycle. So, but also we can get the speckle tracking in the two chamber view exactly the same way how we do it in adults. And we can get the radial strain as well. And we are almost finished. So here we have longitudinal strain rate. This is another characteristic that allows us to see how fast deformation occur or basically this is the uh, velocity of deformation. So and this is an example where these technologies can be applied. So this is a patient who was referred to us with enlarged heart and no fluid around the fetus. And you can see there is a large, tur a very turbulent flow seen at the level of the ductus arteriosus. And the velocity is very high. So this is a situation that for some reason the ductus arteriosus closes prematurely during the pregnancy. And here we have the image in 2D. And if you look very briefly, probably you won't be able to identify any problems with the contractility of the right ventricle. But if you look the, and apply the strain rate uh, technology, you can see that this is absolutely ineffective way to contract for that right ventricle. And the, some segments have a normal negative strain, but some segments are actually moving uh, the opposite direction. So this is really, really, um, uh, difficult situation for the right ventricle and basically it's failing and we can vi vividly see it. So here is an, another example. This is the aneurysm of the left ventricle and we can see the apical aneurysm here and here in the two um, chamber view. 
And this the speckle tracking technique, we can uh, identify that um, which segments are actually uh, delayed in its contraction. And you can see that the peaks of different segments are different. They are not occurred at the same time, so that we can uh, visualize the dyssynchrony during the contractility of this left ventricle. And in the two-chamber view, we can see the same phenomena that some of the segments show the negative strain as it should be. But the apical segments, this is where the aneurysm is, they move paradoxically. That's why the strain is positive. So as you can see, this technique is very intuitive. It takes the seconds to apply because a lot of steps are automated such as the retrieval of the cardiac cycle. And so it usually sounds for the obstetrics people as a rocket sign, but you know, I would like to encourage you to go to the uh, exhibition hall and try, because it's really, really easy. You will be surprised how easy it is. And this is the myocarditis uh, on the fetus, the CV infection. And here we can compare the strain and we compare the displacement. And so this is, uh, again, can be applied on any heart that you have. And um, I think that this is the real breakthrough um, that we see this year in the Canon technologies. And here is just a summary why we have chosen the Canon technologies for comprehensive pregnancy evaluation. And I hope that um, you will also get familiar with them and will be using them in your clinical practice. And I would like to uh, thank my mentor, Dr. Abu Hamid, for his support over the years that I worked with him for the last 11 years, and also a support team from Canon Company, who unfortunately were not able to come to Berlin. And also I would like to thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you. And we did a quick pre-scan, and so here you can see the speckle tracking um, software in action. So here you can see the um, longitudinal strain, and as you can see on this image, so images in my presentation were obtained from the apical position, so here is the basal position. So technically it can be obtained from um, any position of the baby. Yes, yeah, so we have a pe uh, the fetus. Um. In the vertex uh, presentation and cephalic presentation. So we are 34 weeks here. You can see that for 34 weeks we have absolutely phenomenal uh, image of the uh, brain anatomy, so that almost no shadows or any obstacles for evaluation of the brain anatomy. So in here, we have the heart. We are going to optimize the image. We're gonna, so the, for the speckle tracking for the um, you should the imaging, you want to achieve as high frame rate as you can. So that's why we would like to optimize the image. We want to narrow the angle of the scanning. And we want to make uh, the heart taking the most of your image. So we want to make the image crisp enough so that the motion of the myocardium would be successful from the first attempt. And I think that now baby is practicing and moving and breathing a little bit, but we will try anyway. Okay. So we freeze the image and now we are activating the wall um, motion tracking software. So and as you can see down here that they probably had the only cycle that would be available for us to take a look at. So this is very, very helpful that you actually can uh, see the, what uh, quality of cycles you have. You can put the three dots here like this. And then we start. So in, 
probably not that successful that it was before. Okay. So looking at the anatomy of the heart, you can see that this is perfectly normal heart. We can visualize four chambers uh, and um, two EV valves. You can examine the heart the, the color Doppler. And by activating the luminous flow, we can make that um, blood flow look um, like the 3D. And as you can see that the borders are much better defined and um, the reduction of the bleeding artifacts is also very nicely achieved. We can switch to the advanced dynamic flow. Sometimes it shows better um, results than we are looking at the great vessels. And here we are at the level of the three vessel and trachea view where we can identify pulmonary artery, aorta and superior vena cava. And if you will move a little bit higher up, we will be able to identify the um, left brachiocephalic vein draining to the superior vena cava. Like this. And then we activating color. This is a beautiful image of the left brachiocephalic. So the T, uh, this is a left brachiocephalic, and the tissue in front of it is the tissue of thymus. This is, this is a very good technique to evaluate thymus as well.